We're analyzing Chevron stock ticker CVX to see if its market price is a fair value. We're using the select six analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for Chevron. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Chevron for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Chevron stock performance. Right now, Chevron trades for $166.95 per share. In the last year, their stock price is up 7%. This is outperforming the S&P 500. In the last five years, Chevron's compounding their stock price at 6% annually. In the last 10 years, Chevron's compounding at 3% annually. Going back prior to the global financial crisis, in the last 18 years, Chevron's compounding their stock price at about 6% annually. Their average dividend yield throughout this time is in addition to their compounded annual stock returns. Right now, Chevron pays a large 3.5% dividend yield. Chevron has been paying dividends for the last 111 years. They've had a dividend payout since 1912. Chevron's trading in between their 52-week high and their 52-week low. Less than 1% of their shares are sold short. Chevron is a very large business. They have a $314.5 billion market cap. But why should we be paying close attention to Chevron? Chevron's the third largest position in Berkshire Hathaway's public stock portfolio managed by Warren Buffett, with Warren Buffett himself making the purchase. Chevron makes up just under 10% of Berkshire's overall portfolio. Berkshire Hathaway is the largest shareholder in Chevron. They have an 8.6% ownership stake in the business. Why is Warren Buffett interested in the business? Chevron is an integrated energy company with exploration, production, and refining operations worldwide. It is the second largest oil company in the United States, with production of 3 million barrels of oil and equivalent a day, including 7.7 .7 million cubic feet a day of natural gas and 1.7 million barrels of liquids a day. Production activities take place in North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Australia. Its refineries are in the United States and Asia. For total refining capacity of 1.8 million barrels of oil a day, proven reserves at year-end 2022 stood at 11.2 billion barrels of oil equivalent, including 6.1 billion barrels of liquids and 30.9 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Chevron Corporation was founded in 1879 and is based in San Ramon, California. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital looking for a benchmark of 14%. There are two key reasons for this. The average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. These business returns will be captured here by return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this allows us to build in some margin of safety for ourselves based on the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. Chevron, as an integrated oil and natural gas company, will see that its returns on capital will fluctuate with the pricing of those commodities. Indeed, their returns on capital went negative when oil went negative in 2020. Since then, as oil has rebounded, their returns on capital have increased. Averaged out in the last five years, Chevron earns about 9% returns on capital in a given year. This is a couple percentage points above average. It's well below the benchmark we're looking for. This is an X on metric number one for Chevron. Metric number two, we're looking at the growth of the business. We want five-year revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. This is all or nothing. Thing, all three of these have to be up for this to be a check. During this time, Chevron's grown their revenues by 54%, their net incomes have more than doubled, and their free cash flows have more than doubled as well. Even when the price of oil was negative in 2020, Chevron still had positive free cash flows. They've had positive free cash flows in all five of these years. It's great to see such strong growth in their free cash flows. Free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. A business's ability to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is what that business will be worth. We'll be using that exact method to come to an estimate of an intrinsic fair value for Chevron. So wait till the end. Because all three of these are up, this is a strong check on metric number two for Chevron. Metric number three, we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in Chevron by looking for earnings per share growth in the last five years. Chevron's earnings have more than doubled over this time, and Chevron has only diluted existing shareholders by about 1%. This is marginal at best. Because of their strong earnings growth, this is a check on metric number three. Chevron has more than doubled their earnings per share in the last five years. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years for Chevron. Similar to their earnings, their free cash flows have more than doubled over this time, far outpaced their shareholder dilution. This is a strong check on metric number four. Recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we have three checks and only one X for Chevron. 
During economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. Metric number five, we're seeing how Chevron uses debt. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow Chevron has produced in their last five years. Chevron has reduced their net debt position during this time. They currently have about $9.5 billion in net debt. And in the last five years, Chevron has produced $90.4 billion worth of free cash flow. This is a massive amount, nearly 10 times the amount of net debt that they have. This is a huge check on metric number five. As Chevron's strongly cash flow generative, they'd be able to pay off their entire net debt position with about a quarter's worth of their current free cash flows. Chevron is massively cash flow generative right now. Looking at their cash flow statement, not only has Chevron increased their cash from operations, similar to other oil businesses, they've actually decreased their capital expenditures in the last five years. This is what's driving that gush of free cash flows. Before we get to metric number six, let's not forget about our bonus. We're looking at Chevron's dividend profile. Right now, Chevron pays that large 3.5% dividend yield. That's about double the dividend yield from an S&P 500 ETF. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. It's important to stop to see if a business's dividends are well supported or not. Chevron's increased their dividend payments for each of the last 36 years, and they've paid dividends consecutively for 111 years. During their last five years, Chevron not surprisingly has grown their dividend payouts. They've managed to support their dividends in four of the last five years. 2020 was the only exception as oil was hitting those historic lows. Since then, as the price of oil has rebounded, Chevron has been strongly cash flow generative. They have a very modest current dividend payout ratio based off of their free cash flows. While this is a snapshot of their last five years of performance and no guarantee for the future, Chevron's dividend looks very healthy right now. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will give a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and it may offer a reasonable starting point for a fair value of Chevron. Currently, Chevron has a $325 billion total enterprise value. This takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. It gives a perspective of Chevron as if it were similar to a private business. We learned Chevron has produced more than $90 billion of free cash flow in their last five years alone. In an average year, Chevron produces about $18 billion worth of free cash flow. When we divide that by their $325 billion total enterprise value, that gives us a 5.5% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, when we divide Chevron's $36.5 billion worth of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their $325 billion total enterprise value, that gives us an 11.3% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Both of those come in above Above the yield of the 10-year treasury and above that risk premium we'd be seeking, this is a strong check on metric number six for Chevron. Just because this is the case doesn't mean you run out and go buy the business. This is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. It's not financial advice. Stick around as we come to a more concrete estimate of Chevron's fair intrinsic value before giving our rating to the business. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Chevron, which brings us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to an estimate of Chevron's fair intrinsic value. A DCF model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. It's like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with an average of Chevron's five-year free cash flows to give us a normalized perspective of the business's free cash flows. Then we're growing these into the future using historical growth assumptions. It's up to you to do your own homework here. Assuming Chevron grows their average free cash flows at a rate of 5% annually for the next 10 years, then assuming these grow at 4% annually in the 10 years out from there, if we add in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an estimate of their tangible net worth, and we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments, in addition to his margin of safety requirements, from today's valuations of Chevron, an estimate of their fair intrinsic value is just under $163 per share. That's down just $4 from the company's current stock price. There are some key factors you'll want to be mindful of here. Chevron has had a low degree of business predictability in its past. This affects our assumptions, and this could also be the case for the business going forward. Chevron's 3.5% dividend yield would be included in this 15% discount rate. Chevron is also a cyclical commodity producer. The pricing of oil and natural gas will have an impact on Chevron. Also worth noting, Warren Buffett slightly reduced his position in Chevron in Berkshire Hathaway's fourth quarter of 2022 13F filings. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before considering any investment decision, consult with your financial advisor. In just a moment, we'll give our final rating to Chevron. But we have to address something first. What are the qualitative aspects of the business? 
Starting with the key points supporting a potential long thesis, number one, Chevron should realize improved downstream earnings and returns as conditions in its California refineries improve and new chemical production capacity is added via its CP Chem joint venture. Number two, Chevron's large Permian position is mostly composed of legacy acreage, meaning the firm did not overpay to enter the play. 75% has no or a low royalty rate, giving Chevron a cost advantage. Number three, returns and free cash flow generation should improve thanks to a cap on capital spending and the addition of higher margin production volumes. Then for the key points supporting a potential short thesis, number one, relatively little investment in new businesses outside hydrocarbons leaves Chevron exposed to potential value destruction and strained resources if oil demand falls faster than expected. Number two, Chevron's focus on the Permian for growth could leave it exposed to cost inflation given the high levels of activity in the region relative to other basins. Alternatively, it has a high decline asset that requires high levels of reinvestment. Number three, Chevron might be unlikely to ever earn earnings or returns on par with historical averages, given past investments and potential low oil prices. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the key qualitative aspects of Chevron. Now it's time to give our rating to the business. In analyzing Chevron stock ticker CVX, we learned the business earns above average returns on capital of about 9% annually in the last five years. This was below our benchmark. Chevron has grown their revenues by more than 50%, and they've more than doubled both their earnings and their free cash flows, while just slightly issuing more shares outstanding. Chevron's decreased their net debt position over this time. They've been massively cash flow generative. They'd be able to pay off their entire net debt position with about a quarter's worth of their current free cash flow on both a current and an average basis of their free cash flow to their enterprise value yield. Chevron was coming in above the risk premium we were seeking in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury, potentially looking attractive there. Chevron's paid a growing dividend in each of the last 36 years, making them a dividend aristocrat. They supported their dividends in four of the last five years. Chevron very strongly supports its dividend currently. Again, Chevron is the third largest position in Berkshire Hathaway's public stock portfolio. It was an investment Warren Buffett oversaw himself, making up nearly 10% of their US-based portfolio, and Berkshire Hathaway is the largest single investor in Chevron. With all the factors of our analysis in mind, it looks like Chevron is a strong candidate for further research. Performing our discounted cash flow analysis, if you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, from today's valuations of Chevron, an estimate of their fair intrinsic value is around $163 per share. Keep in mind the factors we touched on earlier. It's worth reiterating, this is not financial advice. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for getting this update on Chevron with me, and have a great day.